Welcome to Tripwire Tech Tuesday. My name is Nick Brown, and I've been at Tripwire for around two and a half years. I started out in technical support. I uh, moved on to Moonlight as a Tripwire Enterprise product trainer, and now I'm a systems engineer. So today, we're going to be talking about how to avoid IT crisis fatigue. So Tripwire Enterprise can gather any number of different kinds of information from a monitored system, such as file and folder changes, changes to the registry, uh, changes to the result instead of policy, changes to the output of commands, etc. However, it is possible to cast the net too wide, and you can potentially end up with more information coming in than you can react to. So this will lead to important changes, or the signal, being lost in a sea of innocuous daily information, or the noise. So we'd like to improve this ratio, so the important information is easy to see and react to. So today what we're going to talk about is having a single point of control to look at security or configuration deviations across many different kinds of systems, determining what information is essential and actionable, how to best categorize and filter non-essential information without just ignoring it entirely, and automating reactions based on policy test failures or other triggers. So as we often do, we are going to start in the dashboards of Tripwire Enterprise, dashboard reporting. In here, we can have different dashboards associated with different types of information, such as approved versus unapproved changes, as you can see right here on the left, certain types of changes that are of particular importance to me that may be an indicator of a breach, or reports that show my compliance level with particular policies, such as, say, HIPAA or PCI. So these dashboards allow me to quickly tell where I have changes that I need to take a look at and help me prioritize my time that I spend in the Tripwire Enterprise console. Being able to see that we have unapproved changes from the night before, in other words, anything red on this report in the upper left, or being able to see that we have a new executable on the system, such as right here, will help me guide where my attention should be focused. However, these dashboards, they really only reflect the data that we're already gathering in Tripwire Enterprise. To use them to their fullest, we may need to do a bit of tuning to our rules and policies. This can be especially true when we are running custom rules or policy tests that we've created for homegrown applications or important file shares that are particular to our organization and may not be out of the box, so to speak. So this does apply mostly to file system rules that look at files or folders, because that's where the majority of noisy changes come from, in my experience. But there are ways of tuning other rules as well. So for a file system rule, there are a few things that we can do to cut down on the number of things that we need to manually look at every day. Some easy wins can be a ticketing system or a CMDB integration, using, or perhaps using Tripwire's dynamic software reconciliation. So let's talk about ticketing systems first. If your organization has a change management process that involves some sort of ticketing system or really any place where change context or approvals would live, then that's a prime source of change for Tripwire Enterprise. When Tripwire Enterprise finds a change, because that's always step one, we can then query the ticketing system to see if there's something in there that covers that, such as a ticket that's been approved, happens to be in a work state, applies to the endpoint in question, and is within a stated work time frame, for example. If we find such a ticket, then the change can be approved using that ticket number as the approval identifier. Obviously, this works best when the change management process is rigorous and followed consistently. The other thing I mentioned, which is Tripwire Dynamic Software Reconciliation, well, that's really a long name for an add-on to Tripwire Enterprise that automatically promotes changes made by system patches being applied. So it reaches out to the authoritative source of the patches, be that Microsoft themselves, YUM repos, whatever is applicable for the operating system in question, and it grabs the file manifests for uh, available packages and creates a small database of them. So when we find changes in Tripwire Enterprise, because once again, that's always job one, we can look into that little database and see if a match is found. And if we find a match, we know that this particular change is because of a certain patch, such as Microsoft KB number, whatever, has been applied to that system. But these solutions don't cover all changes. And many organizations may not have a change management ticketing system to reference, or perhaps the, the context just isn't there. So in these situations, there's still many different things we can do. The first thing that we have to decide 
is, do we need to monitor the files in the first place? So it, it sounds kind of like a silly question, because obviously we've decided that we're already going to monitor this folder or whatever the case may be. But if we really think about it, we may be casting the net too wide, and we're, we're gathering things we just don't necessarily care to see. It could be log files, temp directories full of ephemeral files that will be deleted soon, uh, anything like that. So if that's the case, then we can adjust the Tripwire Enterprise rule to skip those. We can do that by changing our start points inside the rule. So I'll just pull up an example rule here. And here's a list of specifiers. These are our start and stop points that dictate where in the file system to start recursing down and what to grab. So we can use multiple start points that overlap with each other to change perhaps uh, what criteria we're gathering, or we can use stop points to say, I choose to not ever look in this directory at all, because this is something like log files, which you can see right here, that are just always going to be changing and, frankly, are not really in scope. Or we could actually go into a particular start point and add a filter. As you can see here, this one is only including things that end in DLL or EXE. We're looking for executable or binary files. So perhaps we could also exclude something like star.log. So if we've decided that these files and folders should still be monitored, we have a couple of options. So the first is to adjust what attributes of the object we're monitoring. The perhaps the file's constantly being written to. So monitoring the file size or the hash is always going to show a change. But we still need to take a look at it. So what do we do in that case? Well, if we can ignore those attributes and only monitor the permissions and ownership of the file, that's actually useful change information about the secure configuration of it without drowning us in change info. So once again, I'll be ignoring if something continually writes to the file, but if somebody decides to go in there and monkey with it and make it world writable, then uh, that I care about and that I will see. And that is done by defining the criteria set associated with a particular start point. And so as you can see, if we nestle start points underneath each other, what that's effectively doing is say, I want to, on the fly, switch which criteria I'm looking at for anything applying to that start point. So the other options in this scenario are to auto-promote changes based on certain criteria. We call this a business-as-usual workflow. So I have certain files and folders, let's say, that I must monitor for security or compliance reasons, but I don't want changes to show up on my reports unless they deviate from something I would normally see. So that can include things like what account actually made the change, what time the change happened, what particular attributes of the file changed, etc. So I can actually use actions in the console here to look for those criteria and evaluate if they are what I was expecting to see before promoting the change, or perhaps sending me an email if they don't. So business as usual workflows can be implemented in a number of different ways. And if I show you the conditional actions here, we can look at attributes. Audit trail here takes a look at what user made the change, or perhaps what application was used to make the change even. Um, and we've got here is also the time range conditionals, the other one that I talked about. But you can see a few others that we can use, including the type of change. Is it new to the system, or was it a modification to something that already existed, or perhaps it's a removal from the system? So because there are so many different options here, there's no one right way of doing it. So I hope now that you can kind of see the possibilities and get some ideas of a workflow that would work for your own organization. So we've talked about how to filter or how to auto-promote changes that we don't need to see. So let's talk about how to prioritize those that I do need to see. So this is where severity levels come in useful. Each rule in Tripwire Enterprise has one or more severity levels associated with it. So let me go back into the same rule that we were looking at earlier. So for each start point in here, there is a default severity uh, applied. Out of the box, if you just created a new file system rule and clicked next until you had a rule created, uh, it would end up with a severity of 10,000 by default. The severity, however, can be anything from zero to 10,000. So these severity levels are user definable in the console and in the rules. And what I mean by that is, obviously on the start points we can define what severity we want associated with a change found under that start point. 
But as for what does that actually mean, well, I can go into my settings manager here, and there's a section for severity ranges. And so I can actually define thresholds here for the various severity ranges that I want to define, which is to say if the severity is between 1 and 33, I call that low risk. Between 34 and 901, that's low vulnerability, etc. So a couple of these in this console are magic numbers, 901, 902, 903. I'm going to use those perhaps for very specific changes or very specific rule types that I want to be able to see at a glance that a change was found to because I can also choose what color is associated with these changes. So that gives me just an at a glance in the nodes manager. I found a change to this particular rule that I'm concerned about perhaps, but also assigning different severity ranges and colors to general sets of changes. Maybe it's not a magic number. Maybe it's not a particular change. But I can then scope a report to say, I want to only see changes with a severity range greater than or equal to 1,500. So what that allows me to do is get this sort of prioritization into my reporting and into my console, into my dashboards. So I can color code, I can prioritize different changes, I can see at a glance what changes to look at first. One other thing to mention about severity ranges and reporting is by default, Tripper Enterprise reports ignore severity ranges of zero. So if you have a rule with a defined severity of zero, it will not by default show up on your reports. This is actually made use of uh, by default in Tripper Enterprise for the policy rules because those changes are looked for primarily for uh, compliance evaluation, not for general integrity monitoring. So setting a severity range to zero effectively filters those out. So the final thing that I want to talk about today is the ability to react automatically to certain changes. So this can mean a lot of different things. It can mean sending an email or a syslog message to a sim. could be run a script if certain criteria evaluate to true. So I touched on this a bit earlier when we talked about business as usual, uh, because this uses the same sort of conditional actions to look for you know, whatever attributes might be acceptable change. And if I find that they are acceptable, then again, I want to promote them. Or if they're not acceptable, if any of them evaluate to true, then I want to fall through and send an email or a syslog message, something like that. But we can also... Let me pull up the actions here. We can also set a reaction to trigger based on causing a policy test to fail. If we find a change associated with a policy rule that causes a test to fail, perhaps I want to react accordingly and send something to my compliance officers. So to make that live a little bit for you, perhaps, uh, I'll talk a little bit about policies in, in quick detail. Uh, each policy in Tripwire Enterprise is made up of different policy tests, sometimes hundreds per endpoint. So each test looks at one particular configuration item and evaluates it. So to do this, there's a set of policy rules that gather all the necessary information for our policies to evaluate. So because they're just rules in Tripwire Enterprise, we can associate actions with them as well. So that means I can attach an action here that states that I want to do something if change causes a test to fail in a particular policy or group of policies in my console. So once again, the idea behind that is primarily to email a report to myself or perhaps a compliance officer or team, but other reactions are possible as well. So I hope now that you've seen various different potential methods for cutting down the amount of noise in your environment, and you have some ideas of your own for things to implement in your organization. So things such as filtering out unnecessary changes, auto-promoting of known changes, and targeted responses and reactions with information going to those that need it only when they need it. So thank you very much for your time.